My name is Naya Bates. So my name is Justin Reed. My name is Hannah Scruggs. I'm a Fluvanna native, and I am excited about this trip and this journey um, to learn more about reading the river and how to navigate, as well as the geography of the county and the impact African Americans had on this area. And I am a Cumberland County, Farmville native. My family's from Buckingham and Prince Edward as well, so a lot of our family history is shaped by the Appomattox River and the James River, and I feel like a lot of that, that cultural heritage is something that I missed as a kid, so for me, it's an opportunity to reconnect, reclaim some of that history, and hopefully learn the skills and knowledge that I can pass on to the next generation. So I'm a native of Albemarle County, and I have ancestors who were enslaved in Fluvanna along the river at Brimo. Uh, I'm excited to learn how to navigate the river, how to make it a bigger part of my life, and how to connect with the history of black people along Virginia's waterways. And I'm Horace Scruggs. Hannah, Naya, and Justin and myself spent a few days paddling the James and the Rivanna rivers. We spent time learning how to navigate the rapids, learning how to read where the river was flowing as it moved between rocks, and learn what kind of paddle strokes that would help us avoid those obstacles. But as most historians do, we began to talk about the people and the places along the river the places and the people who would have been navigating these rivers. And it finally came to the understanding that even our ancestors in our enslaved state would have navigated these rivers, moving goods and services up and down the Rivanna and the James. And so this story is not just about learning how to paddle up and down a river, but it's also learning how to navigate our own ancestry and the stories. And we finally came to the conclusion that what we really needed to do was we were really needed to reclaim these rivers. This community has always been sustained by the Michunk and Meacham's Creek. My family fished along those creeks People were baptized in those creeks. That water filled our wells, and it's really what kept these communities alive. When my grandfather moved here from Wilmington in Fluvanna, he was much closer to the main river, the Rivanna River. But in moving here, they had to learn to live a little bit farther away from those main sources of water. In this community, the industry was primarily farming, and many of the members of the community worked in support of these plantations located along Route 231. Men in these communities were coachmen, they worked as butlers in the main houses on these plantations, they worked as carpenters and as well diggers, and that is really what sustained my family uh, in this community. The women in our family worked as cooks, uh, they grew most of their own food here, so we had lots of life-giving things growing in the land here. Um, I remember when I was a kid, we still had a plum tree, a cherry tree, a pear tree. We had a ligandberry tree. Um, my grandparents had a garden where they grew things like collard greens and they had chickens, they had guineas. I mean, there was all sorts of life here, uh, which makes sense because it was a big family. Uh, my grandparents raised 15 children in this house behind me. Um, and I don't know if you can see the original, but it was a much smaller house that only had two bedrooms. And then they added onto it throughout the years. So this community has really evolved in ways that are a testament to our connection to the land and our connection to the water. It's really those two things that sustain this community, the land and the water. in the, uh, the cemetery of our ancestors. Um, it's very strange for me because where I grew up is less than five miles from here. Right, and we have Ben Creasy who's buried here. Right. And he died in 1825. 
And so he would have been your fourth great grandfather. So my fifth great grandfather. And he was, it says on his stone that he was 50, age 50 when he died. Um, so he was born in the 1700s. Yeah. So that's someone mid, so it's mid 1700s, I guess 1775, right? So right. he would have been born sort of before the United States was a country. He would have been walking on the same property almost not 200 years later, but 150 yeah. years later. 150 years later. That your family was still connected to this, this land. So this cemetery is, um, it's a pretty good size. Um, at least 100 feet square. And it may go beyond the, the stone walls that are, that are here. Um, and so the river is probably less than a mile um, to our south. And so you can imagine the, and the, and the main plantations are um, closer to the river, but you can imagine the cargo of goods and people being moved from this plantation onto the river. Down to Richmond. Down to Richmond. Um, and getting transports of, of things for the plantation from the, from the river. Out, and then enslaved way. people also navigating the river, taking the cargo. Right now we're on Elk Island and it's actually pretty close to where I would put in um, in Cartersville on the boat ramp there. Um, this is kind of the, the furthest upstream I've been on this part of the James. Uh, and my family is from Cumberland, Buckingham, Prince Edward County and Cumberland County is actually kind of the furthest north of what's considered Southside Virginia. So right now we're essentially paddling along the edge of the James that serves as the border between Southside and, and the rest of Virginia. And I can't help but to think about how significant that is and how distinct the history and culture is in Southside um, because of the James River and our region's location in the southern part of P the Piedmont region. Um, you saw a lot of large plantations devoted to tobacco cultivation. Can you see water from the other side of the And in Southern Virginia, you also saw some of the largest uh, black populations in the state because of slavery. And so right now, you know, we're essentially on the, the tip of that region. Paddling and being on the river with my dad and with Justin and Naya has been a really powerful experience. Seeing a place I was familiar with from the river helped me better understand the geography and the places where my ancestors lived. Before we did the project, I learned that my ancestor William Matthews had been a canal boatsman. When I was on the river, I was able to imagine him and experience places where he navigated. This experience has inspired me to look at waterways through a new lens and to consider the relationships between my ancestors and the land and waterscapes where they lived. Over the course of this project, I have learned a tremendous amount about what it actually took for my ancestors to lead lives connected to Central Virginia's waterways. Whether learning to read the river's hazards and obstacles from upstream, or manage seasons of drought or flooding, or navigating changing seasons, or even steering a canoe from point A to point B with some semblance of control. I'm still working on that. To me, our local creeks, streams, and rivers, or even the outdoors broadly, are places of serenity, reflection, and peace. During our trips and discussions, I had to confront the reality that these places may not have held those same meanings for my enslaved and free ancestors, whose contact with these same waterways were an everyday part of life.
And I feel a deeper connection because of this experience to those who came before me. And I also feel a deeper connection just to the, the waterways in general and the natural environment. I feel more committed to helping to protect and sustain this heritage, this natural heritage for the next generation. And I think that's an important step toward environmental justice, particularly for brown and black communities. We have to kind of reintroduce ourselves to our environmental heritage. And when I'm on the water, I feel closer to those who navigated these same waters before me. I, I feel a sense of, of calm and I also feel powerful and free. And I like to think that even in their most trying moments, my ancestors felt this way too. So now as we launch a canoe or kayak or simply stand on the banks of these waterways, we are reminded of our ancestors as they would have navigated these rivers as well as the social structures of their time. And with every paddle stroke we take, we reclaim.